I am the best at what I do. I set that reminder to go off every single morning for the two years leading up to the Tokyo Olympics. It is the reminder that assisted me in creating and maintaining the confidence I needed to perform when my name was called. Now, I'm going to take you back to a few years before the Olympics. We took a number of trips over to Japan in preparation for the Games, and this photo was taken one day after we arrived for one of those trips. We woke up that morning and headed to a very jet-lagged practice, to the point the outfielders had finished their drill, and instead of starting something new, they stood in the outfield and laughed at the infielders, bobbling balls on the dirt. When that practice finally ended, we headed inside to the gym to crush a workout, and we did. And when that workout ended, we were called in and told out to the track we were going to do some heat training and get used to the humidity. That was a fancy way of saying we were about to do 400-meter sprints in a relay race format. <laughs> so they split up the split up our team into groups of five based on fitness testing scores to try to keep the teams as even as possible so it'd be fun and competitive. And when the five of us came together, we just cracked up. We were the more senior group. On the walk over to the track, we could hear the coaches and support staff placing bets on which team was going to win. Not a single one chose our team. Yes, in addition to jet lag and fatigue, we were collectively not the youngest group, nor the fastest group. But what could we do? We adapted our mindset to allow us to thrive. We added our ages together and called ourselves Team 149. <laughs> we decided to give it our all. And we decided to prove we were five women who should not be overlooked. Now, this was not an easy task for us. For anyone who doesn't know softball, we put the ball in play and we run 60 feet. If we're lucky, we turn left. <laughs> I was battling my shaky legs at the start line, waiting to start my final lap. And in the lane next to me, the fourth runner took off. And it dawned on me in that moment, we had a we had an opportunity to lap them. By the time I was tagged to go, she was 100 meters down the track, but I was full of intent. At the halfway point, I was on her heels. She could hear my loud legs and heavy breathing coming for her. I you know what happened next. She peeked over her shoulder, saw me coming, and picked up her pace to match my speed. I gave everything I had on that final lap. I had teammates pouring encouragement into me, and we didn't just win that meaningless conditioning drill. We finished strides short of lapping another team. The five women you see in this photo went on to represent their country four years later at the Olympics. The same cannot be said for the young woman who needed to be chased in order to give her best effort. The power of our mind is incredible if we use it. Although it appears I predicted the wrong season, I had big Olympic dreams from a very young age. I'm told when I was little, I was asked if the parents yelling and screaming during the game bothered me while I was pitching, and my response was something along the lines of, yelling and screaming? I didn't hear that. I was too busy concentrating. And although my hockey dreams morphed into softball dreams as I was graduating college, I remained committed to that young girl's dream and eventually was able to step onto the podium with my teammates in a stadium filled with empty seats. And we accepted that historic bronze medal, and it is a memory that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves is when we hear success stories, we often focus on the glorious end product, which, of course, looks shiny and amazing. 
But dreams are not achieved without a laundry list of obstacles and challenges, and I'm no exception to that in sport or in life. A big challenge toward the end of my career was the simple act of getting out of bed in the morning to train for a delayed Olympics that may never happen. Although every list may look unique, I guarantee you behind every success story, there is a list. Throughout my journey from young child with a dream to Olympian, endless work went into creating a confident mindset. And I continue that work today. Earlier this month, I read an article citing Ashley Sampson's work studying long distance runners and their real time thoughts in an effort to add scientific validity to the idea that mental toughness is a learnable skill. Let's go. <laughs> Now, with more time, I would share all the details of my mindset map with you. It has taken years of working with mental performance professionals, coaching athletes of my own, taking courses, learning, and reflecting over time, including my performance under pressure test, which in reality is, did I remain in my process under pressure? Today, I'm going to focus on mental awareness and ask you, when you wake up in the morning, what are the thoughts running through your head? What about when you get dressed for the day or you're heading out the door to school or work or practice? Routines can be an amazing way to help you notice your thoughts. This photo here shows what may be the most important moment in my pre-pitch routine where I have my final mental check-in paired with a deep breath as I step into the batter's box. My routines provide me with both the space and the timing for my mental check-ins. Now I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a moment or focus on a spot in front of you. And imagine you're on an airplane. You've just settled into your seat after stretching your legs in the aisle, and the seatbelt light dings on. So you buckle in. The pilot comes over the loudspeaker asking for all passengers and all flight attendants to please be seated with their seatbelts fastened. We are going to hit some bad turbulence. You pull on that strap just a little bit tighter. Suddenly, the bumps start. And then the plane drops what feels like 20 feet in an instant and continues thrashing through the clouds like popcorn over a hot stove. I don't know about you, but my anxiety is through the roof. I'll invite you to take a deep breath as you return to the room. For over a decade, I have used moments like that to help me prepare for performing on the Olympic stage, or on a stage like this one. I was shaken. <laughs> <laughs> and although we cannot control every thought that enters our brain, we do have the power to choose our mindset if we put in the work. One mindset I use on a daily basis is adapt and thrive. It allows me to overcome moments where things that are unplanned happen. And I've become so used to defaulting to adapt and thrive, it's almost like it's tattooed inside my brain. Resiliency and excellence do not create themselves. Success does not come without challenge. Setbacks will happen. I challenge all of you to create and then practice your own adapt and thrive like mindset. Now that I'm retired from athletics and have given myself the time and space to rest and recover, a new dream has emerged for me. In thinking about the approximately 5,500 other female identifying athletes who are in Tokyo, all of the collegiate athletes that I've coached, and the athletes I consult with, what if every one of them unlocked their unstoppable mindset? 
what if the amount of time and energy that we put into our physical skills and our time in the weight room gave just as much focus to the mental tools needed to thrive in sport and in life. Every single athlete has a big game or a big moment. What if more and more athletes were ready for their moment? Title IX has given us more opportunities to play. Now, I want to see what happens when we have more opportunities to thrive. Moving forward, I invite you to own your story, to accept and embrace you, and own your strengths, to choose your mindset, and then to own your mindset. The secret that needs unlocking is already within us. And I'm here to pass out keys and help drive this mission. It's time we prove to ourselves and to future generations just how unstoppable we really are. Thank you. Thank you.